Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a year since the MacBook Pro 14 inch has been out. Time really does fly and I thought this would be a great time to revisit this machine and tell you how it's doing in terms of its performance. Like if it's still able to catch up with all my daily tasks and other intense programs. Uh, how's the design? You know, is the keyboard still working well? Is the trackpad still good? Anything wrong with the hardware? We're all going to be taking a look at that in this video. And before we get into it, I do want to tell you guys about this new app that I've been using, Set App, that's been helping me stay on top of my work and other uh, things, especially regarding with school, which is an essential productivity service for Mac users covering all the tools they need to solve the daily tasks and get more done. I've been using Setup for quite a while now and helps me and uh, other business owners or creatives just stay on top of what they need to get done. Anyone who has an idea in mind or just wants to solve routine tasks faster on their Mac will find a solution here. You can type in anything related to your tasks in search. Setup will suggest the best tools across their 30 plus apps. There's no ads, no advertisements at no extra cost. So uh, let's see, uh, maybe you need um, a uh, password manager, okay? You can type that in and the app uh, secrets come up, then boom, you have a great reliable password manager in like two seconds. Uh, this is actually pretty highly rated on the app store itself too. And my personal favorite is uh, Clean My Mac, which helps speed up and declutter your Mac from removing unnecessary malware, install updates, writing unwanted files in your disk and more. In all honesty, I did see a noticeable increase in performance on my MacBook. Something about just getting stuff done faster and opening something like Google Chrome, which is a little bit more snappier. And if you're a little hesitant, you can get set up a try. They have a seven day free trial for you to work with and you got nothing to lose. Just check out the link in the description down below. So after that's out of the way, let's talk about the design. So the 14 inch MacBook checks many boxes when it comes to its design, weighing in at 3.5 pounds or 1.58 kilograms the pro manages to combine the great specs while being fairly slim uh, not as slim as the macbook air but slim enough to fit in my backpack gracefully i mean taking it in and out of it is just really really smooth really really slim had no problems getting it in and out of my backpack it won't add a considerable amount of burden on my back and that's what i like about it it's very light for being what it's worth the build still is a little bit chunkier than most other macbooks i've seen uh this is mostly due to the fans being added to this ports like the magsafe hdmi sd card readers have been re-added and we got a whole new display with increased size and resolution uh the 16 inch MacBooks felt a little bit too big in my opinion, and the 13.3 inch Macs are great for what it is, but the 14 inches has that small slight kick, which definitely makes using it after a year very, very noticeably better. Bigger screen, but not not too big if you can kind of read me. I've got to say this is probably the perfect size uh, being 14 inch for a laptop. Yeah, they managed to have the screen bezels fit in pretty well, coming in at a resolution of 3024 by 1964p. This is a big jump from the usual 2560 by 1600p on the Airs and Pros before. I mean, not only is this larger, but it's actually very, very sharp. Over the months, I've really come to appreciate the display. It's kind of something that you can't unsee once you use a MacBook with this resolution as high as this. And you also do get the added 120 hertz screen, which makes your scrolling across the user interface very, very buttery smooth. After a year now, I'm so used to it to the fact that if I go back to something that isn't over 60 hertz, I feel a little bit slow. I mean, going back to the MacBook Air, I'm like, hmm, things are a little bit choppy here. Everything about the screen looks beautiful. Watching YouTube and Netflix looks more amazing on here than ever. When I get into photo editing on Adobe Lightroom, the colors and details are accurate and sharp. Even when I do schoolwork on this laptop, the screen kind of makes looking at a bunch of text that was once boring, not all that boring. It looks bright, it's fluid, it's sharp. The screen is definitely something to be proud of. Now, unpopular opinion, uh, after a year, I. I kind of say I, I must like the notch. Now wait, 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 before you guys start setting fire to the comment section, hear me out. I, I think the notch looks cool. I can see how it makes the bezels a lot thinner. And the fact that uh, when you maximize a window, the uh, top bar will kind of become one with the webcam itself. It's like, it's not even there. It's a really nice addition to the MacBook. I mean, that's advanced programming right there, guys. But the keyboard still feels as nice as ever after a year. These definitely feel a lot better than the MacBook Air because of the deeper travel. It's a subtle improvement. In my opinion, a lot more enjoyable to type on. I haven't noticed any problems after a year. My buddy just picked up his new MacBook Pro 14 inch just last month and while I was typing on it, it, it still felt the same across uh, everything. Other than maybe just my MacBook had a little bit more oils on it from the fingers and all that. Overall, it's also nice to see the ports back in the MacBook, like the MagSafe and SD card readers. Like, like these ports were very essential for creators like me. So I'm glad that they brought it back. History repeats itself, please. And uh, let's let's jump into the performance. The performance coming out of the M1 chip today, even after the M2 chip is released now, the M1 on the 14 inch Pro, is still pretty, pretty amazing. It's still very, very fast. As a college student, this is kind of overkill for most people. The Pro 14 inch coming in around $2,000 makes this 
that's a heavy, heavy investment. And after a year, it still remains the quickest, the most fluid, and the fastest MacBook, in my opinion, till this date. Uh, as a health information management student, I spend a lot of time researching a bunch of articles, browsing statistics, information, running tools like Tableau, Power BI. Most of these times, these apps require a lot of CPU and RAM to power these apps. Chrome, as we know, is very RAM hungry. So it usually takes around one gig to run across a few tabs. And while that might not seem like much, when you pair this up with a video editor or some content like Netflix or YouTube playing in the background, that's something I come to notice on the MacBook Air is I'll start to hit like a ceiling if I have too many stuff open. While with the MacBook Pro, nada, I don't get that. The 14 inch MacBook Pro stays relatively cool and manages to chug through all the information and more. Additionally, uh, if we're talking about video editing here, when I edit 4K clips and have larger timelines, the laptop still remains very speedy. Of course, the fans occasionally start to rev up, it gets a little bit louder. It doesn't really bother me here. For normal lightweight usage, the fans can be quiet, I mean like, at least 70% of the time. And if you're wondering about the specs, I do have the base model, eight core CPU, six of which are the performance cores, and I believe two of them are safe for efficiency, plus you get that added 14 core GPU, which definitely, definitely helps out with DaVinci Resolve and any motion graphics that may need that eGPU kick. I got 16 gigs of RAM in here. When I ran a Geekbench test on this, the numbers are pretty freaking high. You can see here that it's a 1766 for single core and 9,948 uh, for all the cores combined. And after a year of the battery, uh, how's it doing? It's still going pretty well. Surprisingly, my battery life did not degrade that much over the years. I still feel like it does go for the advertised 14 hours to Apple states when I do edit videos and do other intense things. I'll keep it charged to give it that consistent power, but I can usually have this laptop sit out for two to three days without having to charge it. It still has a lot of, bit of juice left. In each of those days, I only use a MacBook for around three to four hours. I'll just have it on or maybe I'll be doing something. So the battery life still does feel like the day I got it. Um, I really can't lie. I don't really notice anything bad with the battery. Battery health still is really nice. But uh, in conclusion, it feels like Apple has finally came to their consensus and gave us a MacBook that we deserve. This, in my opinion, definitely earns the title of a MacBook Pro. Uh, not that MacBook Pro with a touch bar that we got in a few years back that didn't have any ports for us to use and the screen and all that was kind of the same. All of the ports on here make sense. The screen is really, really nicely upgraded. The keyboard is oh so ever nice. Trackpad still remains uh, top notch to this day. The speakers are loud. The fans aren't that noisy. It's a solid built machine. Power coming out of the M1 chip today is still very, very powerful. And I have no reason to believe that this is gonna get slowed down in the next uh, two to three years. So if you're worried about future proofing or anything like that, don't worry at all. It really comes down to maybe the apps and these new softwares that are constantly adding, adding more and more stuff to meet the minimum requirements. The MacBook Pro, if you buy it today, I wouldn't be worried with it. It's still a very phenomenal laptop. So I do recommend getting it if you are in the market for one you're going to be in for a treat. Anyways, that's all I have for today's video. Just an update on the one year. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or anything down below. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next video, I'll see you then.